All right, it's Wednesday, November 10th. I picked up a copy of today's New York Times, and I wanted to do another vlog with an overview of the entire issue. But there are so many great stories today that that would take way too long. So I'm going to have to focus on just a couple, and maybe I'll get to the other ones uh, in some other occasion. So let me start with my favorite story. It's trivial and not so important. An executive at Pacific Gas and Electric, which is the main utility company in the San Francisco area, was suspended... Uh, from work because he assumed a fake name to join a online discussion group that opposes the use of smart meters. Smart meters are electric meters you install in your home and they send signals back to the company and the uh, goal of these is to make the electric grid more efficient and direct the energy to where it's needed at the time that it's needed. The great irony here of course is that this guy, Mr. Devereaux, is the senior director of PG&E's smart meter program. So the presumption is that, and his claim, is that he just wanted to use a fake name to get into this group to monitor what opponents of his own smart meter program were saying. I love this because this is, uh, reminds me of someone from the Young Turks who always signs into the chat room and criticizes what the main host of the program is saying. But what I'm not totally getting with 100% certainty from this article is whether this guy actually was just doing this undercover to gain, uh, to do opposition research, or whether he's actually trying to sabotage his own program, kind of, which has been known to happen. By the way, there are two ob main objections to the use of smart meters. One is that they emit radiation that causes cancer, and well, no one is sure if that's true or not. The other is, is that it's an intrusion of Big Brother into our lives. That leads me to a second story it's an overview, it's a good overview by the New York Times of a showdown set for uh, controversies over online privacy. Because in the next few weeks, two federal agencies are going to issue reports uh, on the subject. Uh, if you're interested in online privacy issues, you should read this article. What I want to say is, I I'm not interested in online privacy issues at all. I don't get it. I mean, privacy is super important. I don't want the cops snooping around in my home or invading my privacy. But I kind of understand carving out the expectation that there is no privacy online. If you post something, anyone can have it and everyone can use it. So if you go to a website, you register, and then you get targeted ads all of a sudden in your email or wherever you browse, I, I just have zero objection to that. This whole controversy over Facebook, sharing your data, well, if you don't want to share your data, don't voluntarily enter it into Facebook. So when it comes to online privacy, I, I, it's really a non-issue for me. I don't believe that uh, anyone should expect any. With the obvious exception, if you use online banking and you, I mean, they shouldn't, the bank shouldn't be sharing your uh, bank account information with the whole world, but that's not an online issue. That's more of a general smart business issue for, for the banks. So, uh, that's online privacy. The galling story of the day here is this fraud by workers at a Holocaust fund set up by Germany to compensate victims of Nazi persecution. Over the past 16 years, apparently, this fund has created fake, or the, the workers at this fund have created fake stories uh, using thousands of people and stealing about $42 million from this Holocaust Victims Compensation Fund. This is really sad and atrocious, and I'm glad somebody detected some suspicious activity in these claims and reported it to the FBI. And in one year, the FBI investigated it and uh, came up with charges on, on several different workers at this Holocaust uh, Compensation Fund. It's amazing and fascinating the degree to which people will commit fraud. In another important story, talking about societal trends, there's a, finally a movement away from the giant big box stores to, more, to smaller retail centers where consumers feel more comfortable, they have better uh, grasp of the choices, and uh, as an additional benefit, the store ha can pay less, less rent because the space is smaller. Uh, that's, uh, I think, ultimately a good sign of taking America away from this uh, overt consumption back to something more human scale and reasonable. So I'm happy with that trend. Elsewhere in the paper, I learned that the new incoming government governor of Connecticut, 
a Democrat, Malloy, is facing unbelievable problems in Connecticut. I was a little surprised that, I mean, I know all the states are having problems, including wealthy states like New Jersey, but I thought Connecticut was maybe the wealthiest, easiest to govern state in the country, but apparently not. They're facing massive uh, financial fiscal problems. Uh, I've learned that China doubled energy use in the past 10 years, and that trend is going to continue with China just consuming voraciously world energy. We're in some, for some exciting times in the coming decades. Well, what's going to happen with China? And I'm going to wrap up this vlog. It's way, way inadequate to, uh, to uh, cover all of the interesting articles here in today's paper. But there's an uh, op-ed in the back here. The title is Why Rush to Cut Nukes? The Senate Should Insist on Changes in the New START Treaty. I presume that this article is saying that we don't have to reduce our nuclear weapons inventory as much as uh, it looks like the START Treaty is going to do. Uh, I have no idea what's in the article because the authors are John Bolton and John Yu, two of the craziest uh, figures from the Bush administration. Why would I or anybody read even one word of this stupid editorial? I, I would recommend that you get the paper, read it, but skip that editorial completely. And I'll check in later.